Welcome back to AP Physics C Unit 1 Kinematics. This is Lesson 1.4, Two-Dimensional Motion. This uh, is going to focus on vectors and how we use vectors in kinematics. So for almost every quantity of motion we discussed in one-dimensional motion, we're going to have a vector analog. For stuff like time, time interval, speed, those aren't real vectors. They're scalar quantities, and so there's not going to be a vector analog for it. So uh, let's get started. This is mainly going to be about that. We're going to start with position. Uh, the position vector is represented with an R with the vector symbol above it. And it, you know, represents position. Uh, so usually it's just going to be X comma Y as the um, formula for the position. Now, how would you draw this? If you're given a coordinate plane like this, the position would start at the origin and go all the way to X comma Y, the point. And that's going to be your vector R. For displacement, that is the change in position, and so it's going to be change in x, comma, change in y, or x final minus x initial, comma, y final minus y initial. And so this one, you're going to have to subtract two different position vectors to get uh, the displacement vector. We also have velocity vectors. Uh, the average velocity vector, um, it represents average velocity. You just take the displacement vector and you divide it by how much time interval passed. And the instantaneous uh, velocity vector is going to be the instantaneous. And so it's just going to be the derivative uh, of position with respect to time. So as an example, if your position vector is 2t comma t squared, your uh, velocity vector would be the derivative of each component with respect to time. So derivative of 2t is just 2, and derivative of t squared is 2t. So that's going to be an example of a velocity vector. Finally, you got acceleration. Um, acceleration is just going to be the change in velocity uh, over time, and so you also got average acceleration, which is just change in velocity over change in time, or time interval. And you got the instantaneous acceleration, which is the derivative of velocity. And so if we were to do that with this uh, example problem, the instantaneous acceleration, what's the derivative of zero uh, of two, that would be zero and derivative of two t would be two. And so that's going to be your acceleration vector. Now we can also do kinematic equations with these vectors, it's going to be the exact same um, formulas. So just as a reminder, I'll write down the five different equations you need to know, um, you got x uh, is equal to vi uh, plus vf over 2 delta t. So this is going to be the uh, displacement, so delta x. Uh, the second equation is v final is equal to v initial plus the acceleration times delta time. Uh, v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Again, this might be out of uh, a different order, but it doesn't really matter what the order is. Um, th this is probably the most famous one. Displacement is equal to vi times delta t plus one half acceleration times delta t squared. And finally, the displacement is equal to v final times delta t minus one half acceleration delta t squared. So you got those five equations. Now, all you got to do is take each component of the vector and plug in uh, the values for the equation. So if we were to do it with this situation, we have all the x values, and then we can do the same thing with the y values and get different quantities of motion, different accelerations, times, um, well, time interval is usually going to be the same because, you know, it's combined motion. But different velocities, accelerations, positions, stuff like that. Uh, and so I do believe a few of the example problems or practice problems we're going to do later is uh, tied to these kinematic equations and vectors. Speaking of which, it is time to work on practice problems. Again, this was just a short review, um, and we'll get more in-depth in these practice problems. So starting with this one. Position of a squirrel, we're given a vector r, uh, and it's given in i hat j hat notation. Now, I didn't mention this, but i hat uh, j hat. i hat is basically along the x-axis, j hat is along the y-axis. And so usually what you would do is, if you have something like 2 comma 3, that's equal to 2 i hat plus 3 j hat. And so you can just rewrite it in this way. Now, if you're familiar with uh, vector notation rather than i hat j hat, you can rewrite this vector as 0 0.280t plus uh, 0 0.0360t squared, comma, 0 0.0190t cubed. 
That is the position vector. Now you want to find the x and y components of the velocity as functions of time, right? Uh, for the x component, we just have to take the x component of position and take the derivative of that. And so derivative of 0 0.280t is just 0 0.280. Uh, and then derivative of 0 0.0360t squared, you bring down the 2, that's going to be 0 0.0720t. For vy of t, you just consider this part, you bring down the 3, uh, you're going to get 0 0.0570t squared as your velocity. And so that's going to be a. Part b is at 5.74 seconds. So we're given a specific time. How far is the squirrel from its initial position? We just have to calculate the x and y components of the position, and that's going to give us our position as a vector. For now, let's just do that. You plug in 0 0.280 times this uh, time, which is 0 0.57, um, 5.74 plus 0 0.0360 times 5.74 squared. That would give you your x value, and to round it, you get 2.79, and your y value would just be 0 0.0190 times 5.74 to the power of 3. That's going to be 3.59. And so that gives you your position vector, but to actually find the actual distance or uh, difference in position, you would just um, say, well, the initial position is the origin, the final position is this. And so Pythagorean theorem, or distance formula, whichever you prefer, uh, it starts at 0, comma 0 and goes all the way to 2.79, comma 3.59. Distance between them is just square root of x squared plus y squared. So 2.79 minus 0 is 2.79 squared plus 3.59 squared. Now, the only reason uh, we can just casually do this is because it starts at the origin. And so we don't have to subtract anything. We already know that 2.79 minus 0 is 2.79 and so on. Now, if you do calculate this, you're going to get 4.55 um, meters uh, because that's the unit of distance and then for part c if uh, same time what are the magnitude and direction of the squirrel's velocity so this is also going to be a uh, vector related stuff you just plug in uh, what you need to know for the uh, velocity if you plug in 0 0.280 plus 0 0.0720 times 5.74 the time value you're going to get 0 0.693 for the other one you get 0. Uh, 0 0.0570 times 5.74 squared, uh, and that's going to give you 1.88. And that's going to be your velocity values for magnitude and direction. Okay, so that's where vector stuff comes in. Magnitude is going to be just like how we found this, actually. It's going to be square root of x squared plus y squared. This time, we don't have to worry about um, finding the difference of anything because we're not finding, you know, actually the difference between two vectors. Instead, we're just finding the magnitude of it. So it's going to be 0 0.693 squared plus 1.88 squared. Now, um, while uh, you do this, that is the magnitude. And the reason why we know that is because for vector quantities, magnitude is basically the same thing as distance from the origin. And so you just use the same formula for both. If you were to solve for it, you would get 2.00 approximately. Uh, meters per second is the unit for velocity. And finally, it says, what is the direction? And that's going to be using inverse tangent. So the formula is inverse tangent of y over x. Uh, so in this case, um, you would do 1.88 over 0 0.693. And again, the reason behind this is, as usual, um, right triangles and Pythagorean theorem, well, less of Pythagorean theorem, really. But um, if you were to draw a right triangle with the vector, this angle, you find the inverse tangent using uh, y and x, and that gives you the angle. Now, this is going to be in degrees, which you're usually going to be doing 69.7, uh, uh, sorry, 69.8 degrees. And so that's our magnitude and direction of the squirrel's velocity. So that was a pretty long problem. Um, doesn't look too bad because it's, uh, you know, just a few parts. But when you deal with vectors, they're going to ask you for magnitude and direction a lot. And that can be some heavy calculator work. Okay, uh, for the second problem here, a jet plane is flying at constant altitude. Um, you got a time at zero, components of velocity are 88 and 115. So... We know v is 88, 115. Now, this isn't um, the function for velocity. Instead, it's at a specific time. So this is at t equals 0. At t equals 30 seconds, it's negative 175 and 35. We want to sketch the velocity vectors at t1 and t2. And so this is kind of 
um, what I was doing before in the content review, you always start at the origin and end where you want to end. So 88 comma 115 is going to look uh, something like that. So that's our first vector. And our second vector um, is going to be negative 175. So all the way here, 35. So still positive. That would be something like this. Uh, obviously, scaling is off and, you know, not exact straight lines, but whatever. It's on a computer screen. For part, uh, it says, how do these two vectors differ? One is um, in the first quadrant, one is in the second quadrant, for example. Uh, you know, you can find a bunch of differences. It's just two vectors. Uh, for this time interval, calculate the components of the average acceleration and the magnitude and direction of average acceleration. Okay, uh, not too bad. Average acceleration is going to be change in velocity over change in time. We know change in velocity, so that's going to be uh, for the x component negative 175 minus 88 over the change of time, which is 30 minus zero. And so it's literally just like calculating it for one dimensional motion. You just have to do it multiple times. So that that could be a little bit, um, you know, tricky. But this is going to be negative 8.77. And for a y, that's going to be 35 minus 115 over 30 minus zero. And as expected, you're going to get two different answers for this. Um, one is just the x-axis and the other is just the y-axis. This is going to be 2.67. Um, and your components, therefore, would be negative 8.77 comma negative 2.67. So that's for part B. And for part C, one's magnitude and direction. So you just plug it into the same formulas. I'm not going to write it out, but it's going to be square root of 8.77 squared. Now, notice we, we're ignoring the negative sign because when it comes to magnitude, negative signs don't really matter when you're calculating but it's going to be square root of 8.77 squared plus 2.67 squared. That's going to give you approximately 9.17 meters per second squared. It depends on if you use rounded values or not. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't be too big of a difference. And then for direction, you want inverse tangent of negative 2.67 over negative 8.77. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. For inverse tangent, uh, let's look actually at where it's going to land. So you're not just going to blindly believe everything you read um, on your calculator because uh, inverse tangent can have some difficulties with direction. Uh, you're going to get an answer of approximately 16.9 degrees, but we don't know exactly where that is. So if you want to find the actual um, average acceleration, it's negative 8.77, negative 2.67. So that's right about here. And this does look like 16 degrees, but we originally assumed this was 16 degrees. That's what we thought it was, but it's in the complete opposite quadrant. And so when, whenever you have to find the direction, you want to always plot the vector first to see if your angle makes sense. This is 16.9. That is definitely not 16.9 from the positive x-axis, which is where we usually measure. And so you just want to add 180 to it to um, bring it to the third quadrant. And so it's going to be 196.9 degrees. And there you go. That's your answer to part uh, B and C. Uh, we have one more practice problem for this video. Um, and it also uses I had J had notation. So it is kind of common that you would see I had J had notation. But uh, I just feel like it's easier to work with like bracket notation. So you got a remote control car. Um, v. Uh, I'm just going to write in bracket notation. You can use whatever you want. It's going to be 5 minus 0 0.0180 t squared comma 2 um, plus 0 0.550 t. Now, I, I'm not worrying about sig figs. You really don't need to worry about sig figs in AP Physics C that much. But if your teacher does um, want you to worry about sig figs, then yeah, go ahead. Do um, include sig figs in your uh, problems. Okay. Um, what are acceleration? So we've done this multiple times before. Uh, you just have to, you know, take the derivative of it. And so the x component uh, is going to be derivative of this. That's going to be 0 minus, uh, you bring down the 2, that's going to be negative 0, uh, 0 0.0360t, comma. And then this is also 0, so it cancels out. And then you, it's just t, so it becomes 0 0.550. Nothing changes there. That's going to be your acceleration. Um, uh, it wants ax and ay, so you can separate it into multiple functions, just say ax is equal to this, ay equals that. 
um, for the magnitude and direction of the car's velocity at 6.87 uh, 6 seconds. Okay, so at 6.87 seconds, you want to calculate the x and y components. So it's going to be 5 minus 0 0.0180 times 6.87. So you notice with these calculator questions, it's going to be really ugly numbers most of the time. Uh, it's going to be 4.88 for your x. Um, and yeah, uh, for your y, it's going to be 5. Seven, eight. And so if you want the magnitude and direction, you're going to, um, you know, take the square root of it. Uh, again, we've used this multiple times. I'm not going to write out the formula. But um, if you were to calculate it, you would get an answer of approximately 7.56 meters per second because it's velocity. And direction, inverse tangent. So again, uh, you just do y over x of so 5.78 over 4.88. And that's going to give you 49.8 degrees. But before we mark that as our final answer, let's plot it like good practices tell us to do. It's 5.78, 4.88. So that's uh, about there. Does that look like um, 49.8 degrees? Uh, sorry, it should be the other way. 4.88 is x, 5.78 is y. It doesn't really make that big of a difference in this sketch. But yeah, that's 49.8. It's in the first quadrant, so we don't have to add anything. That is going to be our direction of the velocity. Uh, and finally, magnitude and direction of car's acceleration. Okay, so we just have to find uh, what the acceleration is equal to. So this is part C. Uh, so just negative 0 0.0360 times 6.87. Um, that is going to be negative 0 0.247. For the other part, it's just going to be 0 0.550. Uh, and so it's going to be exact same formula, square root of 0 0.247 squared plus 0 0.550 squared. That's going to give us a very small acceleration of 0 0.603 meters per second squared. And finally, direction. Again, they love asking for magnitude and direction. It's going to be uh, inverse tangent of 0 0.550 over, this time we do care about the negative, negative 0 0.247. That's going to be negative 65.8 degrees. Let's see if that makes sense. X value is negative 0 0.247, Y value is 0 0.550, should be about there. That is not negative 65.8. Negative 65.8 is there. And so we want to add 180 degrees to um, bring it back to the second quadrant. Luckily, we caught that. That's going to be 114.2 uh, degrees. That's our answer. Um, and that's mainly it for two-dimensional motion. This is just focusing on the vector part of it. But next video, we're going to be talking about a specific type of two-dimensional motion. The most common type, it is projectile motion. So yeah, uh, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.